In a small town in Fukushima, Japan, 1989, a horrific death occurred. One that has people questioning to this day, is that what really happened to Naoyuki Sugano? Okay. Let's go. On the 24th of February, 1989, 26-year-old Naoyuki Sugano, who lived in his family home, told his papa that he was stepping out to see a friend and that he would be back. Nighttime rolled around and he was yet to return. Obviously, being an adult who went out a bit, his parents weren't too worried. Three days would pass and his family started to get anxious, so they decided to go out and look for him, as you do. It makes sense. I mean, one day's mm -hmm. one thing, one night's one thing, three, too mm, many. Too many. You see, they lived in a small town which used to be called Mayakoji. I apologize for my pronunciation. Hi. But that was in Fukushima, Japan. And I say used to be called because you see in 2005, the town merged with a few others and created the city now known as Tamura. Anyway, so it's the 27th of February and they end up finding Naoyuki's car in a farmhouse parking lot that was a few feet behind a teacher's dormitory. Just a little fact to drop in there for later. It was strange because the car was empty, no sign of Nayuki, but they did notice that the key was still in the ignition. That's weird. I'm not 100% sure why they didn't go to police, but by the 28th of February, just four days after going missing, Nayuki would be found deceased. Although I'm not sure of her name, I do know that on the 28th of February 1989, a 23-year-old elementary school teacher had just finished up teaching for the day. You see, Japan had just had a long weekend due to the death of Emperor Showa, who was the longest reigning emperor who ruled for 62 years and died in January 1989. So the teacher heads back to her dormitory, mm -hmm. which is not far from the school building. Understandable, yeah. Some of you may not be aware that in February, Japan is rather cold. And I'm so sad I'm going in June. <laughs> I'm I glad love the cold. I'm glad to be going, full stop, point blank, but it's going to be wet and warm. But yes, February in Japan is rather cold with average temperatures being around five to seven degrees and then obviously getting colder through the night. So it's a bit more nippy. Oh yeah. Odd. And snows. It snows in some places too, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, so upset. Now, it was around 6 p.m. that she was rushing back home as usually people aren't out very late in a small town and the dormitory she lived in was rather old and had an empty lot behind it. Huh. Once she arrived home, she headed to her bedroom before then heading off to the toilet. I mean, if that was me, I would have gone straight to the toilet as soon as I got home. Same. You know, just same. If I need to go, it's because I need to go. She gotta go. Now, another fun fact that you might not know, mm. um, a lot of older style homes in Japan have squat toilets in their house. And I've been to Japan and I'm sorry, but I cannot use them. I don't think I would have the balance to mm. squat, pee, squat, poo. Yeah, no, I think you would, but it's just, it's gross. Um, and how, as a woman, how do you not get it all over your shoes or your skirt or whatever you're wearing? Because you don't have control over the stream. It's more like a splatter, isn't it? Yeah. I think because the way these squat toilets are, like they're just like that longer, so it kind of just kinda catches looks like, everything. It kind of looks like when you turn the tap on for the first time in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'm sorry. Like this case was so hard for me to do because I have a bit of a phobia when it comes to like drop toilets and stuff like that. So I'm just like, no, yeah. can't do it because I think about things like long johns. Oh, no, thank things you. Things climbing back up. Mm -mm. Anyway, I digress. So squat toilet is exactly what you think it is. It's where you place your feet either side and it's like a toilet in the ground. Anyway, right underneath the toilet is the septic tank and the sewage outlet was just outside. So someone would often manually open the lid and then empty the tank. So someone, sorry, hold Disgusting. on. Disgusting. Screech, stop. Someone had to manually empty. Yeah. No wonder they got rid of them. Oh, wait, there are probably some places that They're still have still, yeah, I think But some. someone has to go clean up people's physical. Oh, have you ever smelt a septic tank before? No, and I don't want to. I have when one was being cleaned out. No, thank you. 
or also like a grease trap. Those things also just smell so terrible. Yeah, so I don't know if it's every drop toilet or if it was just like this one was a toilet. I guess the older they one. are, they probably yeah. would require that, yeah. Yeah, so it was also shaped, if you think of like a U shape, and you remember seeing the photo, it reminded me of like a magnet, an old school magnet. Oh, the horseshoe magnets. Yeah. yeah. So one end, the septic tank, and the other attached to the toilet. Now look, I don't know if it was before she went to the toilet or after, but something had caught her eye and it was a man's shoe. Okay, pause, rewind, thank you. There was a shoe in the toilet. Yes. So yeah, I don't know if it's like before she went to go do the toilet or after she'd gone to the toilet because then you'd be up to see in and she saw a shoe. Straight away, she was alarmed as you would be and ran outside to the back of the building, lifted the septic tank lid and straight away saw a pair of human legs in the small space of the tank. The woman would start screaming to which her colleagues would rush out to see what was going on. She had shown a few of them and around this time I would hope someone was already on the phone to some sort of emergency services. And how well lit are those poopers? Yeah, I don't need, I don't even how know. How could you yeah. see that? How could you see it all, right? It's crazy. There's a lot of questions. What coloured shoe was it? I don't know. Yay. What, if it was a white shoe, it might no, catch No, black. Eye. How is that going to catch your eye? Mm, she, did it. she did it. She did it. Case solved. She did it. They noticed that the body was not moving and no noises could be heard. Shock. So police arrived at the scene and they tried to get the man out, but they were unable to. The entrance or opening of the tank was about 36 centimetres in width, which is extremely small, Mm -hmm. and the opening to the toilet was 20 centimetres. So they tried, but unfortunately there was just not much you could do. Also the smell, as you were saying before, trying to get someone out of a poop tank. No thank you. No. And if you were to put yourself in, you have to contest with that smell in the fact that there's actual shit and piss floating about your face. Right? So I can't imagine that... I don't... mm. How you could willingly go in? Yeah, no thanks. No way. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. So police already assumed the body to which they now knew, obviously, was a man, was deceased. So they contacted the fire department to see if they could come cut him out. They were able to use an excavator and crane to dig up the pipe and... After some time, they removed the piping from the ground and split it open. Inside, they found the body of a man laying on his back with his face facing towards the toilet hole. His knees were bent and his hands were crossed over his chest and he seemed to be hugging his neatly folded coat. The man was only wearing trousers and no shoes on or a shirt. And it's very odd because they only found one shoe at the scene and that's the one that the teacher initially saw which we said was weird as well because if the spacing is very small how did your shoe get up that far above your head if you're on your back and if your body is kind of blocking off the rest of that space because i understand water and stuff can move Mm. but But, uh, if if he's literally in there so tight that they have to literally get the excavator to get Mm. him out i don't understand how that works The body was taken for an autopsy. However, due to the body lying in literal feces, it had to be cleaned before the autopsy was done. So yeah, I don't know, it it was very odd. And it was concluded that the man died of hypothermia on February 26th. And he died of hypothermia, not of shit in his mouth, not of drowning on piss, hypothermia. Well, you did mention that it was cold. It was really cold and the public holiday, so no one would have been there over the weekend. There was also no signs of force or trauma that made police think that he was forced into the tank. There were a few minor scratches found on the body, like his elbow and knee, but outside of that, no signs of a possible homicide. Once the body was cleaned up, it didn't take long before the man was identified as 26-year-old Naoki Kano, who at the time was working as a sales manager at a nuclear power maintenance company. So at the time of the autopsy, they're kind of scouring the area, having a look to see if anything 
you know, any evidence, anything they can find. Um, and it would be about seven miles or 11 kilometers away that Nayuki's missing shoe was found on a river bank. Outside of finding his missing shoe, police were unable to find any evidence that would suggest any foul play was done. And the case was marked as an accidental death. Not only did they say it was an accident, they also thought that maybe Nayuki entered the tank in order to peep at women going to the toilet, got stuck and died of hypothermia. Now look, I'm not going to lie before I dived into this case, I totally thought he was going in for a perv, but now that I've dived in a bit more, I'm not too sure. Because mm. mm. I just don't understand what he... Surely there are better ways to cop a view. Like, I think getting in is shat on. Probably not the one I'd vote for. No. In saying that, please don't be pervs, guys. Like, that's not okay. No, do not be pervs. This is what happens when you perv. Don't be a perv. Don't be a perv. So, Nayuki's family and some of the villagers weren't too happy with how the police just brushed this off as a pervert in a toilet, as they believed Nayuki was a good guy, as he was well known and liked in the village. They were so unhappy that they in fact started a petition for police to reopen the case and investigate the possible homicide of the man. They actually obtained so many signatures and what the public was questioning seemed pretty plausible. Remember how I said the police had difficulty pulling him out because the opening width was 36 centimeters and the toilet was yeah. 20. So obviously if he was to have entered on his own, he would have had to go through via the back entrance. Now the other thing is that Nayuki was actually five foot seven. So what, that's 170 centimeters and his shoulder width was around 40 centimeters. So how did he get down there? 40, 36? Those numbers don't match. How you getting in the hole? Well, yes, I see what you're saying, but it's kind of like, you know how cats can squeeze through holes that are smaller? Like, if you can talk yourself a certain way, like, yes, this might be that wide this way, but when you crunch it down, or when you enter one part inside before the I'm other... I'm loving the movements you're doing. This is well, it's like ballet. I yeah. What you guys probably don't know is that I used to be a professional ballerino. A bell bellend. I still am a professional bellend. <laughs> Connoisseur of Oh, no, bells. you're a professional ballet, because ballet is for the women and ballet is for the men. And a ballerina is a female one and a ballerino is a male one. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if you fix it. Yeah, so it was really weird and I found reports that his father even did a reenactment to show... What? Yeah, so his father tried <laughs> to get into... Sorry, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Why, Dad? Yeah, just to show that, like, how is it possible that he got in? Did he... So, but is he the same build as his son? But like, I mean, you saw those photos that I showed you earlier. There was a skinny guy trying to get in. He couldn't even, yeah. Well, look, I also don't think he was giving it 100%. Did you try? Did you give it your all? Other questions were around why was he shirtless with his jacket folded neatly under his arms, missing one shoe and with one shoe above your head, like we said before, why would anyone get into a septic tank just to perv on women or get peed on or What year was on? this again, sorry? What year? 1989. Never mind. I was like, do what the rest of us do. Look it up on a computer or on your phone. Watch 1989, not so easy. But no. I mean, this is also Japan though. And they mm. do have a thriving porn community. Mm. So I'm sure you could have gone to some store. I know. So many options. Also, if he had gone to Perv, they questioned why would he go when there was a public holiday slash time off mm. because of the Emperor's death that was from the 24th of February until the 27th. It was also well known that a lot slash all of the female teachers would tend to go back home over public holidays and he would have known that. So why did he go in on the 24th if that's what they were thinking he was doing? Like, why would he go in for a Perv on a public holiday when no one's yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Another thing to get you questioning is that apparently Nayuki knew the female teacher and her boyfriend pretty well to the point that the female teacher was receiving harassing calls and Nayuki and her 
boyfriend help tape the conversation and go to the police. So I kind of also went down a bit of a Reddit dive, deep dive of people talking about this. A lot of people were talking about the thing earlier, that hyper, hyper flexibility. Yeah. People were talking about that. They were also saying as some people think the lady did it, the female, like you did, where you're like, how did they know? Because they were like, why, if you saw something, did you go straight to the septic tank to open it up to have a look? Why didn't you just go run off and, yeah. A lot of, lot of questions. Or if all you saw at the time was a shoe, then why that, yeah. Mm. If you saw a shoe and you didn't see anything else, why would you assume it's attached to a, she has something to do with it. Yeah, it's a bit odd, very, very odd. Mm -hmm. I did also find some reports, and I say some as in it may be real, it may not be real, who knows, but an article stated that apparently Noyuki had decided to go and find out who the caller was that was harassing that female, and a few days before his death, he confided in a friend that he may have found out who that person was. Ooh. So there's a bit of a like, hmm. They kind of think maybe he was murdered by the caller and shoved into the pipe so that he was viewed as a pervert to kind of ruin his reputation yeah, as well. Right. You called me a pervert, you've outed me, I'm going to call you a pervert. Another theory is that around the time of his death, Naoki was helping out with an election um, as the town was currently searching for the next village leader or head of the village. Uh, the two people running at the time, one was pro-nuclear power and the other was opposed. So I want to remind you about the Fukushima plant thingy in old 2011, wasn't it? So that kind of like my mind went a bit like crazy because I was like, he was a power plant worker, even though he worked in sales, but you know, still kind of worked. And not that long later down the track, that plant kind of blows up and well, has a has a little meltdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little meltdown. And I think this town got uh, evacuated as well. Digression well, it, in Shashan. But it would, so. It would have. The most steps. There is also talk that maybe Noyuki found himself on the shadier side of politics and got wrapped up in something that, you know, maybe he shouldn't have or maybe he found out something that he shouldn't have known or maybe knew too much. To this day, Naoyuki Kano's death is ruled as accidental and has been closed. His own family believed that he was murdered and his father dived into trying to solve the death of his son. And that, dear Mung Beans, is the mysterious death of Naoyuki Kano and what in the actual FK case about the man who found himself stuck in a toilet. But I originally thought he was going in for a perv. And then the further I dived into it, I was like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't, add, it doesn't add up. But the other thing is, like, the thing that really doesn't add up is the shoe. For me, it was the shoe and his car. Because it's not like, or, ah, uh, okay. What if he was being chased? Here's a thought. What if he was being chased and he was just trying to hide from someone? He knew he could park there because he knew the person. He also knew that he'd go there because it was during the holiday, during a holiday that no one was going to be there. And he thought that his best chance at hiding, hence also why he lost his shoe, Cinderella, it fell off while she has been chased. And then he finds somewhere to hide mm -hmm. in the septic tank thinking, I'm never going to be found here. And then he kind of, he died of hypothermia in there. That's what I kind of thought as well. Exactly what you said. I thought maybe he was running away from someone. And hiding. Yeah. And That's like, a good or, hiding place. Or he dropped his shoe, but it's like, why would you have dropped your shoe? You know what I mean? If you drop your shoe in the tank and then, but you've got to lift the but lid. You wouldn't and, go, I would say goodbye shoe. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. See ya. Goodbye shoe. But yeah, that's uh, my story today. That's a bit messed up, but yeah, all right. It's pretty gross. So uh, if you ever go use a squat toilet, just think about it. Keep an eye out. Yeah, keep an eye out for some shoes. Um, make sure you call the police ASAP. And on that note, bye. Bye. Do what I want, Dad. <laughs> Let him be his own person. I'm my own man, Papa. Called Maya Koji in Fukushima. So just confirm, is it Maya Koji or Maya Koji? That's my coach. That's my question. Who's this one? I want a sweet from the chandelier. Anyway, so. I think I like this in the lamp. Yeah, that was nice though. We've been on the TikToks, haven't we? She trusts a fart. It's no. all over Red Rover. Trust a fart. Never. Don't do it. Don't do it.
Don't you do it. Don't you bloody do if it. If you trust that fart, I'm going to smear you. And you'll be more mad at yourself because <laughs> you'll have a missed on your blood farts. Blood farts. Yeah. That's what you'll get. You trust a fart, you'll get blood farts. Blood squirts. Blood splat. Baby, Baby blood splat. <laughs> and the sewage outlet. Sewage. Sewage. Sewage, it sounds weird. When you say it, yeah. Sewage. 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 It's like when you say bill. Oh. Uh-huh. No. Oh, oh. His own... Me. 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 Me.